I know this is slightly provocative, but we now know that autoimmune encephalitis can present with psychosis as the f- first and key symptom of the disease. And provided a young patient with psychosis has been clinically assessed with exclusion of other causes, for example, alcohol or drug use, um, and any other major primary psychological disorders, it is appropriate to offer them the treatment benefit. This assumption is based on two facts broadly. The first one is, of course, the fact that historically, before antibody testing for autoimmune encephalitis was implemented in clinical practice, the time to make a diagnosis of autoimmune psychosis from uh, encephalopathy or encephalitis took a long time, um, often in excess of several months. The second thing is, which is not widely recognized, is the fact that there is a small group of young patients with psychosis who can die quite suddenly. And this is known in the literature as neuroleptic death. And what is noted in the literature, and I'm talking about a very respectable study in Israel from three teaching institutes reporting these neuroleptic deaths, in young people with increasing doses of antipsychotics to which they didn't respond. Now, we know that patients who have autoimmune psychosis, they do not respond to conventional antipsychotic treatment with neuroleptics. In fact, they are quite treatment refractory. The second thing is uh, sometimes symptoms of autoimmune encephalitis could be mistaken as that of behavioral problems of psychosis. A good example is an odd form of seizure called facio-brachial dystonic seizure, which can happen with anti-LGI-1 antibody-related encephalitis. And that could be easily mistaken as a functional problem. So I think um, there is a concern that some of the avoidable deaths with acute psychosis could be related to a neurological cause or a delayed diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis. There is a question, of course, that steroid treatment can create uh, problems in a patient with mental health issues, but that is manageable under supervision. And in any case, if a patient turns out to have autoimmune psychosis uh, in a well-established uh, encephalitis from anti-NMDR antibody, we will still give them uh, steroids. So I don't think that's a reason not to offer. But the advantage of steroid treatment is that you can establish a treatment benefit early and not wait endlessly um, for the antibody result to come back or for the neurologist to come and see the patient and arrange for those relevant tests. So I'm expecting a lively debate um, and obviously counter arguments to my suggestion and we look forward to that. There are quite a few recent publications looking at uh, psychosis and autoimmune encephalitis. In Lancet Neurology, there was a kind of a consensus paper published in terms of identifying patients with possible or probable autoimmune psychosis as first presentation of encephalitis due to an MDR or, or other autoimmune encephalitis. Uh, so I think that would be important. Um, started uh, as a discussion. And on a broader uh, note, there is some debate whether psychosis itself could be an autoimmune disease, at least in a small group of patients who may have family history of autoimmunity, or also those who may themselves had other autoimmune disorders uh, besides um, you know, the recent presentation. And in in those cases, there is some emerging evidence that an autoimmune or immunological process can play a role in triggering autoimmune psychosis, which is surprisingly more common in patients 
who have a family history of autoimmune disease. So there is a link and there is a shared uh, major histocompatibility complex uh, human leukocyte antigen uh, associated genetics. So I, I think um, this is quite an important and emerging area of um, clinical practice.